In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the GitHub underscore token in GitHub Actions. You will learn what it is, how it works, how to customize its behavior, and how to change or limit the permissions. But let's dive into it in this 3 Minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Carter Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. And this is a three minutes Friday, so I guess you know the drill. I only have three minutes to explain you something, teach you something, or talk about a topic. And today we talk about the GitHub underscore token. I will try to make it quick, but I'm not sure I can actually stay within the three minutes limits. We will see. But anyway, let's start the clock and get into it. Let's start with seeing what the GitHub underscore token is in GitHub Actions and how it works. GitHub underscore token is a special authentication token that you can use to authenticate on behalf of GitHub Actions. And GitHub create for you the token automatically so you can use it within a workflow run. The way this works is that whenever you enable GitHub Actions on a repo, then GitHub installs for you on that very repo a GitHub app. And then the GitHub underscore token is basically just a GitHub app installation access token. Before each job begins, GitHub retrieves an installation access token for the job from that app. And since the app can access only a single repo, the token permissions are scoped only to the repo that contains your workflow. And to make things even more secure, the token expires as soon as your job is finished. Hope the mechanism is clearer now. Let's see now quickly how to use the GitHub underscore token. There are two ways to use the GitHub underscore token. As you can see in this action over here, you can just call it through the secrets.github underscore token. The other way is to use the context GitHub and then it has the token inside. So it will be github.token. Those two ways are completely equivalent. You can see that again, there are two ways mainly to use them. One is to pass the variable in the with and the other one is to pass it in the env. And those depend on how the action has been written. So I would encourage you to check the documentation for the action you're using. And of course, you can use that also in a script, like in this case, as authorization token in an API call using the GitHub API require authorization. And the GitHub underscore token has the permission to use the APIs. If you're thinking, why should I use a GitHub underscore token rather than my regular personal access token, remember that a path is always available. And that means that if someone is able to steal your personal access token, they can access the platform and potentially do some harm. However, as I mentioned before, the GitHub underscore token expires as soon as your job is done. And because of that, even if someone is able to get your GitHub underscore token, and that's actually very unlikely, they can't do anything because the token most likely will be already expired when they try to access. And talking about access, the GitHub underscore token by default has quite a few permissions assigned to it. In fact, this table, which is also linked in the video description for your reference, shows the permissions granted to the GitHub underscore token by default. Good thing is that people with admin permissions to an enterprise organization or repository can set their default permissions to be either permissive or restricted. So let's see now how we can change the permissions of the GitHub underscore token to make it more restricted. Oh, but first, I would really appreciate if you can like this video if you find it insightful so more people can benefit from it. Thank you. Just go to the settings of your organization or like in this case of your repo and then click on actions. When you scroll down, you see that you have this workflow permissions section over here. And in here, you can set the GitHub underscore token to have both the read and write permissions, which is the default, or to limit that just to read operations. With the first one, you'll be able to read the information, but also to make changes, for example, create issues or change your code. While on the second one, you will only have the read permissions, meaning that you will be able to access the content, but not to make any change. That was super quick to do, but of course, uh, not very flexible. What if I want to change the permissions in a more granular way? You can use the permissions key in your workflow file to modify permissions for the GitHub underscore token. You can do it for the entire workflow. And in fact, you see it's before the jobs close, or you can do it at a job level to change the permissions only for that specific job. Remember that when the permissions key is used, all the unspecified permissions are set to no access with the exception of the metadata scope, which always gets read access. Here, we are giving the GitHub underscore token access in a write mode to all the content and to the pull requests. 
and therefore all the rest will have no access. However, in the other job, when I use the APIs over here, I'm gonna need to create an issue. I need additional permissions to be able to write to the issues. Not only you can specify the permissions you want in a granular way, but it also supports the IntelliSense. So as you can see, I can specify all the permissions we've seen in the table, for example, packages. And for each of those, I know already that I can select between read, write, and none. Hope you have now a better understanding of the GitHub underscore token and how it works, what we can do with it, and how we can change its permissions properly. And let me know in the comment section below anyway, if you have more questions about this topic, and I will try to answer all of you. On a similar topic, you can check this video over here in which I explain how to create personal access tokens in GitHub. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.